Tonight's episode, The Endangered Species. Well, there we go. Now I think we're all set up. So welcome. We'll be taking a look at the ATF comment periods, the comments coming in to the ATF based on uh, pistol braces today. So we just got done watching John Crump's channel over ATF there. ATF based on... Sounds like the audio is working. I'm going to uh, just go down to the descriptions of, the, of this video. And there's a link here to the ATF comment period. We're just going to open that up on the screen. And I'm not going to add any additional commentary. We're just going to go through and read uh, some of the comments for the factoring criteria for firearms with attached stabilizing braces. This uh, started on June 9th. Today is June 15th. 85 more days left in the comment period. It'll end on September 8th. And we'll zoom in on the screen a little bit. Uh, we're on the main page. It tells us that there have been 44,600 comments submitted at this point. Uh, 1,370 have been approved, uh, have been pushed through the system so that we can read them. So now I'm heading over to the comment tab at the top of the screen, and I'm going to sort the comments from newest to oldest. The idea to get the most recent comments uh, to take a look at. So next up, um, thanks for joining us. Next up, we're going to just right click and open uh, the first page worth of comments. Whenever we do this, we uh, grab an entire page so that we can see some of the comments in, in order that they were approved. If we look at the ID of the comments, they're not in sequential order. Uh, they are current, they're, they're about 500 higher. The number is 500 more than the last time we were reading comments uh, about a little over 24 hours ago. So uh, they are adding or they're, they're accumulating. And I'm right-clicking and opening each of these comments in a new tab until we get down to the bottom of the screen here. That'll be the first 25 or the most recent 25 comments. And I'm just taking forever, I guess. So next we get to the 25th one. Now I like to jump over to the third page and just grab some, some random ones. So we get 25 of them that are sort of sequential, and then I'll just go through a couple of page, a couple of six or ten of them maybe from page three. Then I'm going to jump to page four and randomly open a few more in a new tab so that my browser is just getting a whole bunch of tabs across the top. And then once we've grabbed a bunch of these randomly from a couple of random pages, then we'll uh, start reading them. And then I think this gives us the best random selection of uh, sample. All right, so we got a bunch there. I'm going to uh, go on to the first, which should be the most recent comment um, submitted. I'm going to read the comment number and then the comment and then go on to the next one without any additional commentary. If you'd rather listen or if you'd like to listen to the same concept, uh, we'll do this for about an hour or we'll read as many comments as I just opened here. And then depending on the time and what time I have something coming up, uh, we'll do some with uh, commentary as well. So we'll comment on the comments. We do have the comment window open here uh, or the text window open here for the comments during the live stream. So feel free to comment if you'd like, uh, but I probably won't pay attention to these as much as I do when we're actually watching commentary. Okay, so the first comment is, Number 810, please leave us alone. We just want to have short barrel rifles without buying a silly stamp. The next one is 809. The stabilizing brace is a tool to allow safe operation of an AR pattern pistol, much like bans on collapsible stocks, many states. These endanger the operator of the weapon system. Any and all tools to make short shooting safer for the weapon system owner operator should be encouraged, not restricted. 
The next one is number 807. I disagree strongly with this proposed rule change. Arm braces are in so wide a circulation as to certainly qualify as common use, consistent with DC versus Heller. I further believe that this would result in unconstitutional taking as previously legal pistol con configuration would be rendered forfeit without any compensation or due process. The cost of destroying, replacing, or registering these items along with the cost to local and state law enforcement in attempting to enforce this regulation is, in my opinion, considerably higher than the figures quoted herein by at least several hundred million dollars. This is a hefty price, this is a hefty price tag for many millions of Americans based on what is, even at its face, an unconstitutional rulemaking exercise. The checklist for determining whether a pistol is really an SBR is vague at best and includes a multitude of factors which have no bearing on the issue at hand. As a case in point, if Congress had desired to outlaw low eye relief scopes on handguns in 1934, then they should have said so. The ATF has no authority to make this change now. The clause that the ATF reserves the right to arbitrarily and capriciously determine any firearm configuration is an SBR, even if it needs, meets ATF's own criteria checklist, invalidates the entire document and guarantees that any citizen owning an arm brace is facing a potential felony. This is not a good faith rulemaking effort designed to clarify a point of law. It is a de, de facto ban in spite of Americans' good faith efforts to follow the letter of the law. A decision which will cost Americans hundreds of millions of dollars and render tens of millions of them felons it is not one that should happen by executive fiat. This is a matter for the legislative branch. The next one is comment number 1061. This proposed law will make citizens of the United States, excuse me, this proposed law will not make citizens of the United States any safer and is just a power grab. Millions of Americans, especially those with disabilities, use the pistol braces to safely handle their pistols. The next one is comment 1057. This rule change would do nothing to prevent gun violence in America and would make millions of law-abiding American felons overnight. Perhaps time and resources would better be spent addressing real problems with gun violence by criminals who illegally possess firearms and commit actual crimes, leaving or leave mil the millions of taxpaying and law-abiding citizens alone. Next one is 1062. These suggested new rules written in 2021 R-08 for determining if a pistol brace turns something into an FBR, SBR are absurd. They are obviously so vaguely written that almost any pistol with a brace could easily get the four points the ATF desires. This does nothing to impede criminals and the ATF knows that. Clearly, criminals don't care if they're following the law. This is nothing more than a cash grab because the ATF feels slighted by the fact they think these should be NFA items so they can get money from the tax stamp. You are not entitled to American people's tax dollars. If the ATF wants to do something about crime, then start going after the criminals and quit trying to turn regular people into felons. Actions like this are why everyone has such a disdain for the ATF. You don't get to arbitrarily make up rules as you see fit. You are not elected officials. Mm. Next one is 1066. Your action on stabilizing braces is pointless and is only being done for political theater. Countless firearms enthusiasts already have these for recreational purposes and live peacefully without issue. Recently, a federal judge overturned California's ban on assault weapons and likely and, and likened the AR-15 to a Swiss Army knife. So this act would only result in more litigation, which would eventually, well, which eventually will side with the 2A community. Make a responsible choice, ATF slash DOJ. The next one is number 1056. This proposal, ATF 2021R-08, will make any of or will make many of law-abiding gun owners like myself into felons overnight. 
The arbitrary ruling that classifies any firearm that uses a brace that does not meet certain criteria into NFA items will disproportionately affect millions of Americans who use braces and greatly harm disabled people such as myself and cause disabled people not to be able to enjoy their sport to the best possible extent they can due to braces. Braces are in common use with the American people. They are popular in firearms from AR-15 AR pistols, AK pistols, bolt action pistols, and many more firearms that would not normally, would normally not need, wait, would not, many more firearms that would not be able to be used in a safe manner without a brace to help stabilize the firearm. This bill will hurt law-abiding Americans, the disabled, youth, and many other groups and do absolutely nothing to combat illegal firearms or gun crime in general. Not commenting. The next one is 1064. To whom this may concern, I want to start off by saying I can't believe we actually have to even fight to keep something such as a pistol brace. As we all know, a short barrel rifle is less lethal to begin with, less dwell time compared to a 16 or 18 inch barrel. Not that should matter anyway, considering 99% of brace owners are law abiding citizens. Why do I say 99%? Because a criminal most likely put a stock on anyway. Well, why? Well, because they are a criminal and they disregard laws. I believe this is an extreme government overreach and attack on our Second Amendment rights so that many law-abiding citizens, wait, that many, so, by, that meant so many law-abiding citizens hold dear to us. The point system is ridiculous and would treat us like children instead of the free Americans we are, instead of free Americans like we are. As law-abiding citizens, we have done nothing to deserve an attack on our rights like this. I do not appreciate this overreach along with my millions of fellow law-abiding Americans. I really hope you consider our time and comments and realize how important our freedom is. And then he signs it with his name, Matt. Uh, and his last name is his business. Next up is 1069. Disagree with all of it. ATF should not have any regulation or say when it comes to a pistol brace. Wait, when it, come, when it comes to a pistol with a brace, the whole thing is very vague and broad. None of the proposed rule ma ruling matters. If a firearm has a pistol brace attached, then it's a pistol. All right, next one is uh, 1078. Very unconstitutional. A, sta a stabilizing brace won't fix any issues. This proposal goes against the Second Amendment. Next up is 1070. All right, so ATF 2021 R-08. Stephanie signs it with her name in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I am a long, I'm a lifelong firearms enthusiast, U.S. Army veteran, NRA certified range safety officer, and have been a shooting sports competitor across several different disciplines. I am opposed to this proposed regulatory action. Proposed language for ATF Worksheet 4999 contains, contains four points to determine if a firearm or attached accessory would indicate that a firearm is designated or intended to be fired primarily from the shoulder. The points listed are subjective and arbitrary. They are not clearly and sufficiently and succinctly defined and are very obviously written to be interpreted by an, in an arbitrary fashion. ATF Worksheet 499 references design criteria or accessory function that supports one-handed or two-handed operation of a pistol or firearm. The, inter the, the inference is that all pistols are designed to be operated slowly with one hand. This is dated information. Modern training doctrine, I'm not commenting, but I'm putting this com I'm making this comment. All right, this is dated information. Modern training doctrine for accurate pistol shooting trains shooters to use two hands. Shooting a pistol with two hands, the primary hand and the support hand, allows shooters to be far more accurate and to much better manage recoil of any pistol. The design criteria assessment worksheet ATF 499 
lists a plethora of accessories that are used to total a sum of points to come to an arbitrary score to determine the design intended use of a firearm. To determine the design intended. Okay. These in included an arbitrary scale for assessing a point value based on length of pull based upon a system of measurement that is intended to be applied to rifles. The position of a stabilizing brace, real active, the position of a stabilizing brace, real active to a receiver extension and the trigger of a firearm does need to be an adjustable length to be able to accommodate the widest range of users based on their individual physical characteristics. I am larger than average woman, 5'11 in height. I have longer than average limbs, a stabilizing brace that is positioned correctly to assist me in having the best stabilized position for my longer than average arms is quite different than what may many other women might need. The form has a section that lists a scoring determination based on the type of or combination of sighting systems that might be used on a firearm. The best combination of sighting systems that gives give the user the best opportunity for accurate fire is a safety feature, not some ill-conceived design to make a firearm more likely to be used in criminal activity. It is a fact that lawyers, excuse me, it is a fact that lawful users of firearms are responsible for every shot they fire. A sighting system that provides the best accuracy provides, incre provides increased safety for the user and reduces risk to any unintended target such as bystanders. These are just several examples of the ludicrous and arbitrary scoring system for determining the intended use and classification of a firearm. The reality today is that there are millions, best conservative estimates range between 3 million to more likely well over 7 million large format pistols and braced firearms in use by law-abiding citizens. These firearms are overwhelmingly used for lawful purposes. These firearms are statistically seldom used for criminal purposes. Braced pistols and firearms are ideally designed and suited for use as defensive firearms. They are lighter in weight, more compact. Their adjustability makes them easier to tailor to the individual phys physical characteristics of the user. They have greater accuracy than conventional format pistols. This proves for increased capa capability as a personal defense weapon. They are better suited for lawful defense in the average home as they are more compact and allow better defensive maneuverability and retention of cover within the confines of the home. There is much political noise describing the larger format pistol or braced firearms as concealable weapons of war. This is inaccurate and a term that has been crafted to suggest that this is a preferred weapon of persons that intend to use a firearm in violent criminal behavior. Anyone that is familiar with braced firearms knows that these firearms are very difficult to conceal. Any individual attempting to, attempting to conceal one of these firearms would be very obvious. Even a casual observer would be able to readily ascertain the bulk of one of these firearms under almost any combination of clothing. Crime statistics clearly show that easily concealed conventional pistols are the preferred weapon of criminals. An alternative to the proposed regulations that would achieve the same or even better results. Wait, and an alternative to the proposed regulations that would achieve, achieve the same or even better results. I suggest that the NFA regulations regarding short barreled rifles or SBSs be stricken from the NFA. Sorry, I had to clear my throat. I suggest that the NFA regulations regarding short barreled rifles, SBRs, and SBSs be stricken from the NFA. All that, all that the NFA regulations regarding SBR and SBSs do is incur a cumbersome regulatory burden on citizens that use these firearms for personal and home defense and for all lawful purposes. The NFA tax is a poll tax on Second Amendment rights of law-abiding U.S. citizens. In summary, I will repeat, I am vehemently opposed to these proposed regulatory changes. I'm not commenting, but... All right, so 1084, ATF 2021R-08 is unconstitutional and must be stopped. 
The ATF's job is to enforce not laws, not create them. Please stop this and protect the rights of the United States citizens. I think we're still on that first page of sequential ones. Uh, this one is 1083. This proposal is redefining the law and should not be done by a federal agency. If this is truly what Americans want to happen, then it should be addressed with new legislation in the House and Senate. These guns have been legal and should stay legal. If there are any changes, the, they should only address future guns and not current ones. As a disabled person, I have needs that are far too often ignored by the gun industry. These pistols have made it easier for me to use firearms for my protection. I'm not commenting. Number 1087. Stop trying to make legal law-abiding citizens felons by trying to pass ruling not backed by facts or evidence overnight. A pistol brace ban will not stop anything but law-abiding Americans from being able to put a brace on their pistols. Criminals will still do it. A buyback will not work and just make Americans hand over items they paid their hard-earned cash for will not work, nor will a tax stamp on firearms with said braces as this will tax many Americans from exercising their Second Amendment right, which says in the tax text, shall not be infringed. And this is a clear infringement on that. Um, scrolled over too many. Okay, next one is 1079. As before, the ATF is but an elected is not an elected body. You have zero power to enact new law or rules that carry the weight of law. Pistol braces have been deemed legal and are in fact not stocks. This proposed point sheet is a catch-all and designed to fail any AR style pistol. While I myself do not see a use for these braces, just as I don't find bump stocks useful, meaning I own neither, that doesn't mean other people who find these aftermarket attachments useful. The ATF is in fact an infringement to the Second Amendment, excuse me, the ATF is in fact an infringement to the Second Amendment as you regularly tell people what they can and cannot own in the ways of firearms. There is a conservative estimate of more than 10 million braces in private hands, making it fall under the common use clause. And let's be real for a minute, shall we, as this is a backdoor gun grab, illegal gun to grab to grab illegal taxes from gun owners. This is nothing more than a poll tax. And guess what the Supreme Court ruled poll taxes are? 100% illegal. The NFA is nothing more than that, plain and simple. This is also a half-handed attempt to implement gun control, which is which also is repugnant to the Second Amendment. And the Supreme Court has also ruled any law that is repugnant to the Constitution is illegal and unenforceable. So that would, by default, mean you, the ATF, and the 22,000 plus gun laws on the books are illegal and unconstitutional, up to and including the NFA registry. But I digress. Back to my original point. You are a non-elected body, which means you have zero ability to enact by def any definition changes, law or rule changes that might carry the weight of law. You are simply federal police officers appointed to enforce what is already on the books. The sooner you relearn that and come to terms with it, the better off everyone will be. Good luck dealing with the FPC in federal court. All right, I'm not commenting. Next one is 1085, <clears throat> ATF 21, excuse me, ATF 2021 R-08. Allow me to begin with the most important part, shall not be infringed. The rest is rendered moot by that right. A brace, stock, hand grip, or barrel length make very little difference to the lethality of a firearm. The only factor that can determine if a weapon is deadly is the brain behind the gun. Try removing murderers from society. No parole or good behavior. Prosecute violent crimes and punish guilty offenders. The beauty of America is our constitution. In it, we are recognized as having God-given rights. Only God can take those rights from us. Next one is 1081. My name is Jean, Jeannie, and our last name is her business. I live in her place, and I'm an elderly woman. The brace helps me shoot. This rule change, 2021 R-08, is so subjective that I will take everything off the market 
it will take everything off the market and make them illegal with the point system you made up. That makes no sense. How are you supposed to determine what someone intended to do with their pistol when it was made, whether they plan to use it properly or shoulder it? You can't read minds or know what a person are thinking or intending to do. The weight and length of pull should not matter. People are different sizes. Pistols can't be one size fits all. Smaller people will need smaller pistol, bigger people will need bigger guns, and about the brace not fitting all the way around the arm, a bodybuilder will have a bigger arm than the woman of a five foot. So the same pistol in their hands could be a felon in one person's hands, but not the others. But you don't care. That's all you want to do is criminalize good people. You want. All you want to do is criminalize good people. You want your rule to be subjective. So however you feel that day, you can change people or you can. You're. However you feel that day, you can change people. We can understand what she's saying. I got to drink some more. All right, I ain't commenting, but I would be commenting. Uh, the next one is 1098. This is an overreach of the government against millions of legal... Oh. All right, sorry about that. Thank you for your patience. Number 1098. This is an overreach of the government against millions of legal citizens of this country. How dare you, unelected officials, dictate what is legal or not? The whole worksheet you came up with is so vague that it allows your officials to interpret how they see fit. This is unconstitutional. You are all unelected. You all don't represent any of our districts, let alone voted on. Your job is only to enforce the law that your department is in charge of, not to make them. You have no constitutional right to make any laws. Oh, okay, we got a bunch more still. Next up is 1101. I, vehement, I vehemently agree with the arbitrary and capricious way that the BATFE wishes to reclassify items that fall within its purview. None of the criteria listed in the BATFE's letter can be construct, construed to be objective and continue the ongoing policy of I know it when I see it style of management of firearms and firearms accessories. The BATFE does not have the power to redefine terms and definitions that are entrenched in law and allowing them to continue to do so is a violation of the Constitution. There are more than 4 million pistol braces in circulation, all sold under BATFE's own guidance, that they do not constitute a stock. The ex post facto redefinition of a brace into a stock is a sign of operating in bad faith. The notion that these items should be registered under the NFA is duplicitous as it denies those living in states that do not allow for NFA items to use their own previously legal property. The proposed points list of features on a braced pistol con constituting a stock under the illegally vague notion of constructive intent is unjustly arbitrary and will serve no purpose but to attempt to read the minds of otherwise law-abiding gun owners. The answer to the concerns of millions of gun owners blurring the lines of intent of the SBR and SBS definitions within the NFA is not to criminalize millions of gun owners who actively made the effort to be in compliance. The answer is to remove barrel length from the NFA and to the completely the answer is to remove barrel length from the National Firearms Act due to the completely outmoded and arbitrary nature of the terms. The carrot of including braced pistols within the NFA is held in front of the stick being unjustly arrested and persecuted because the public servants at the BTAFE changed their minds on a whim. I, oh, I wholeheartedly condemn this action. All right, next up is comment 1100. This is yet another oath-breaking platitude on behalf of the ATF that does nothing to stop real crime, 
but instead turns law-abiding citizens into criminals. Gun control statistically does not work, and it is strictly prohibited by the Second Amendment of the Constitution. Do your actual job and target criminals and real issues instead of patriots and Second Amendment supporters. Next up is comment 1134. Is that, or this is in reference to docket number ATF 2021 R-08. This point system is completely arbitrary and vague. One point right off the bat could be shouldered, might be shouldered based on pre-existing stock design. All ridiculous, all vague, all open to individual interpretation. All you are looking to do is turn law-abiding gun owners into felons overnight. It's insanity. Next up, 1129. Greetings. I am in opposition to the proposed reclassification and rule change to stabilizing braces and braced pistols. The ATF incorrectly asserted that braced pistols were more dangerous than regular rifles and were a threat to public safety. There is no evidence to support that idea. These pistols are rarely, if used at all, in criminal activity and are still large enough to make them difficult to conceal. If fact, in fact, the shortened barrel length decreases the velocity of the round fired and lessens its lethality. There are an estimated four to 10 million of these brace pistols in the hands of US citizens, and it has not caused an increase in violence. This is what's known in previous Supreme Court's rulings as popular and in common use and should be protected by the Second Amendment. Many people find full-size rifles to be too heavy for them to use effective, effectively use. These brace pistols are extremely useful for smaller people and people with decreased ham, hand and arm strength for the use in sport and self-defense in the home. The ATF has previously given the green light for these braced pistols to be manufactured and used for several years now and has written many letters to manufacturers stating as such. To now change their minds and require that these items now be destroyed or registered to the NFA would put millions of law-abiding citizens in jeopardy and make them into felons overnight without any grievous actions. To do this is a clear violation of our Second Amendment and the proposal should be rescinded. Thank you for your consideration. Next up is 1119. So again, here we are trying to take things from people with disabilities. My wife has 100% disability because of her military service and you are wanting to hinder her ability to effectively defend herself. The Second Amendment was not a suggestion. It is an inalienable right bestowed on us by the Founding Fathers to be able to defend ourselves no matter what. Next up is 1121. I strongly oppose, I strongly oppose this proposed regulation. It is a scheme to outlaw and punish law-abiding gun owners who do not use these devices in any illegal way. In fact, these devices are designed to allow safer operation and allow disabled shooters who shoot heavier pistols safely, just like anyone else would. The ATF has consistently been changing its mind and inconsistently applying regulation to these devices. This is just a continuation of vague, menacing, and poorly thought out regulation. These proposed standards fail to clearly define what is and is not legal and allow much ability for agents in the field to use poor judgment and turn law-abiding citizens into criminals. This regulation should be withdrawn and no further action on brace pistols should be taken. Uh, next up is 0930. I oppose ATF making changes to the laws about AR pistols. I oppose the ATF making changes to the laws about braces on AR pistols. This is a pistol and intended to be used with one hand via the brace. I feel this is just another gun grab and should be looked at long and hard before making felons out of law-abiding citizens who own these pistols. Next up is number one or zero nine three nine. This entire proposal is ridiculous and uh, this entire proposal is ridiculous to a shocking degree. For years, gun owners have pl played by the established rules, some of us, which some of which had to be grasped from secrecy, like the overall length of pool rule. If brace pistols were ever an issue, the ATF needed to have it stopped. 
needed to have stopped it at the first sign of these braces hitting the market. Instead, you allowed tens of millions of these braces to be legally sold to Americans who were in full accordance with the law. You realized letters of opinion both acknowledging that they okay, you realized letters of opinion both acknowledgingly acknowledged I don't know, that they were pistols and it was a right to shoulder them. Nearly every single gun manufacturer in the country that produces AR type rifles also legally sells a pistol variant all done under full observation of the law. Two things are abundantly clear. AR pistols are so prevalent that, they pre prevalent that they should logically be considered to be common use and that the market has spoken on the shorter barrel firearm debate. The NFA exists both as a poor tax and an intelligence test, and it does so by choosing a totally arbitrary barrel length as being the metric by which a short barrel rifle is graded. Considering a barrel under 16 inches to be short is an extremely low level of thinking, and any intelligent individual would be correct in their opinion that the barrel length requirement should be removed from the NFA entirely. Technology has advanced in metallurgy and bullet design. It is time for the NFA to be brought into the modern ages by allowing law-abiding citizens to own whatever barrel length they so choose. By, by allowing these brace pistols to be legally manufactured and sold, the ATF has managed to establish a common use situation and is now scrambling to figure out how to slow the spread of a popular and legal product. In no uncertain terms, this proposal should be considered a bait and switch of the highest order. The truth is that owners of brace pistols purchased these products because they wanted to be in compliance with the law. Instead of focusing on violent criminals such as drug cartels, the ATF wishes, wishes to set their sights on tens of millions of Americans who went out of their way to be in compliance with the law. By changing the rules, you mean to create tens of millions of felons overnight in a gotcha situation because you decided that what was fully legal and compliant today might not be fully legal and compliant tomorrow. It's shameful and sad. Either way, I expect a small portion of owners to go through. I Either way, I fully expect a small portion of owners to go through with any further compliance actions should a proposal such as this actually come into effect. By switching up the rules and outlying legal devices, you are probably radicalizing a huge percentage of owners to be the very thing that you fear most, and I suspect a few intelligent members of your force are full or, excuse, of your force are well aware of this. Please take a step back and rethink violating the constitutional rights of law-abiding citizens. I didn't do that one justice, but it was a long one and I'm getting tired, but that was a, I'm not commenting. 0971, the idea that weapons of the American people should be limited in any way is asinine. Leave the people alone, leave the constitution alone and preserve it as you have been instructed. The NFA and all laws are infringements. So why doesn't the ATF work on something productive? Repeal, repeal the Hughes Amendment. I messed that up. Repeal the Hughes Amendment and deregulate all NFA items. Stop taxing people to exercise their own rights. The next one. 1040. This is ridiculous and will turn millions of law-abiding Americans into felons. Stop the overreach. What is the purpose of this outside a political stunt? The ATF is out of control. You're going to regulate an arbitrary attachment to a firearm. What a complete waste of taxpayer funding, all in the name of suppressing my Second Amendment rights. Next up, 1006. Stop. Please stop trying to infringe on American citizens' rights and stop consistently attempting to make criminals out of honest people. Just like the vast majority of law enforcement has been shown to be unneeded, you too are proving this point. Act like real Americans, act like good people, stop following these anti-American, anti-freedom politicians. It's disgusting and an embarrassment. It's time all of you become part of the solution and not an ever-ending partisan, never partisan harassment gang. I'm not commenting. Uh, one, two, Nine, uh, one, two, six, nine. Uh, I strongly disagree with these proposed rules. That was, I strongly disagree with these proposed rules as it would either cause a loss of property or make criminal 
the owners of millions of paced br braced pistols in circulation in the U.S. Uh, next up is 1284. The BATFE has no constitutional authority to create arbitrary rulings in regards to what firearms are legal. There are no legal provisions that give the BATFE the power to designate what constitutes a rifle, pistol, shotgun, etc. By moving forward with ATF 2021 R-08, the BATFE is usurping power that lies entirely in the executive legislative branch, thus acting outside of their designated role. The BATFE is not run by elected officials, and that alone says everything that could be said. There is no law being passed. There is nothing that can be done about pistol braces. Hardly any crimes are committed using pistols with braces. So the BATFE going after these 100% legal accessories? Oh, of course, the answer is simple. The BATFE wants more money from NFA's tax stamps, and they want, and they want to create National Firearms Registry. This is a blatant attempt at forcing people to federally register firearms. The BATFE's agenda is obvious. This is in inching their way towards federal firearms registration across the board and attacking what was once a niche in the firearms industry. However, it is now in common usage by millions and millions of Americans. It's too late for the BATFE to attack a perfectly legal accessory. They could have tried when the pistol brace was first introduced, but they failed and they will continue to fail attacking American citizens' natural rights. ATF 2021-R0808 cannot and will not be moved forward. Millions of Americans will not stand for it, and they will not comply with a tyrannical, tyrannical law. The BATFE is law enforcement only, not a legislative agency. They know this, and the weasel David Chapman admitted such during his hearing to become director of the BATFE. In closing, the BATFE cannot move forward with ATF 2021 R-08. They know this, politicians know this, and the Americans know this. This aggression will not stand. Next up is 1281, excuse me, 1289. This proposed rule brings more questions than answers. The questions this brings into the legal system makes a mockery of the agency along with backing representatives in Congress thus brings to light the lack of any legal guidance or morality this agent has. Each proposed rule change brings light into more legal challenges the ATF opens itself to. This, propo this new proposed rule takes no accountability from the ADA. This rule actually attacks the ADA and anyone who can legally own a firearm is penalized if they need any visual or physical aid to shoot safely. This rule reads with harsh intent and targets an individual with disabilities much like a bully in a role-playing game. Changing the rules as the game goes on or giving the person loaded dice to roll. If a person has an astigmatism, minor muscle tremors, or other physical impairments, this rule, set to this rule is set to criminalize them for requiring aid of a scope, weights, a brace, or stabilizing aid, or at the very least put a tax on them for being disabled. This rule upon simple review is an inter wait, wait, this rule upon simple review and interpretation brings to question the agency stance on eugenics or if they view themselves superior to another. It brings to question if someone needs an accessory or physical aid to shoot safely, if they are interpreted by the agency as being a criminal for being disabled or different. It brings to question, if someone needs an accessory or physical aid to shoot safely, are they then interpreted by the agency as being a criminal for being disabled or different? The next one is 1320. I feel the ruling ATF 2021-R-08 uh, is unjust and jeopardizes good faith in our judicial system. This ruling goes against previous rulings, allowing pistol braces not only to be added to a firearm, but to be manufactured and sold by licensed dealers as complete firearms. This ruling would immediately turn thousands, if not millions, of gun owners who purchase these brace pistols legally into immediate criminals. This is not how our judicial system works. I feel this proposed ruling is a way to ramrod a political agenda and there is no sufficient data showing a wide use of these types of brace firearms to commit crimes. 
These rulings are unethical, and for that reason, I do not support a ban or point system on so-called pistol braces, especially when determination was already made, making them legal to own and use and not in violation of the Gun Control Act. A um, couple more. Looks like we're down to the last four. So we have uh, one zero, or excuse me, one three five. Uh, getting loopy. One three one five. This is an overreaching reclassification of what constitutes an NFA item. It will make millions of law-abiding citizens felons overnight. This change is complicated and unreasonable for the average person to comply with. It also reverses your previous opinion of braces legality. People use that information to make their firearms purchases. Banning these items now is not just unfair, it verges on criminal. No new laws have been passed to restrict brace usage. And last I checked, you are in law enforcement, not legislation. The pistol, pistol brace has been sold for eight years. Some estimates have sales as high as 40 million nationwide. I think this proposal should be withdrawn. Next up is 0841. I strongly oppose the regulation on the stabilizing arm braces for the AR-15 pistols. The arm braces are fixed. They cannot be made adjustable and their configuration is not conducive to use as an SBR, contrary to the mainstream media opinion. By the ATF's own admission, only one of these pistols has been used in an active shooter situation in recent history, so that also lends credence to the fact that these arm braces absolutely do not make AR-15 pistols dangerous enough to be listed as an NFA item. NFA tax stamps are expensive, burdensome, and totally unnecessary in this instance. The NFA is an outdated branch of the ATF and is mostly a cash cow for the government for firearms that just don't warrant such regulation. More than once in the past few years, the ATF has authorized manufacturers an AP of an AR-15 pistol arm brace to manufacture and market the item. There is no reason to change their opinion now or in the future. Many small manufacturers will be put out of business with this change. Many consumers will be forced to pay an exorbitant fee to keep their arm brace or God forbid turn them over, which should never be an option on any firearm. The AR-15 pistol is subject to purchase requirements by differing state statutes for purchase and ownership of a handgun. If the purchaser can pass these background checks and requirements to own a handgun, then the AR-15 pistol in this configuration should pose no additional threat. This is solely a money grab by government and should be a gigantic one and would be a gigantic one at that. I urge the ATF to reject this rule change and consider that the matter closed in the future as well. The GCA and NFA have infringed on our rights enough. All right, second to the last one in this session. Next up is 0816. Once again, you fine and hardworking folks at the ATF surprise me. Every time I think that maybe the ATF can't get any stupider, you do something so goddamn dumb, I lose brain cells. Honestly, y'all should create your own country with all the rules you like to arbitrarily make up. Stop legislating from an agency. That is clearly not y'all's job and y'all ain't good at it. Uh, the proposed point system is assigned in every way. How does adding a red dot sight to a pistol make it closer to a rifle? How does lack of optics or iron sights make a pistol closer to a rifle? And the best part is, it doesn't matter anyway. A firearm is a firearm and changing how you hold it doesn't change that fact. What it does change is how safely one can be with a firearm or how safely one can be a firearms owner. If I am less accurate, somehow that's better. If my pistol has older technology, I don't get sent to prison for 10 years. For an agency pretending to save lives, y'all sure don't threaten violence over a lot of arbitrary, y'all sure do threaten violence over a lot of arbitrary nonsense. Can't y'all go back to illegally selling guns to American, to Mexican cartels that kill innocent people with said guns? Y'all are a lot better at that. The second amendment guarantees my right to own and operate firearms for protection and liberty. Liberty and protection from ty tyrannical powers included. The Second Amendment makes no mention of my firearm's length or how I hold it. A bit of plastic on the end does not change what a gun is and what it can be used for. I strongly oppose any new regulations or rules concerning stabilizing braces. I strongly oppose ATF's overreach and unconstitutional practices. Rebellion to tyrants is obedience. Excuse me. Rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. It's a quote from Benjamin Franklin. They say. All right, and then the last one today is 08, 
71. Uh, I thought the purpose of this agency was to pursue criminals, and instead it seems to want to create more criminals out of ordinary law-abiding citizens by coming up with these stupid regulations. Stop this nonsense and do your friggin' jobs. I think that, I'm not commenting, but that was a nice, concise comment for the end. I don't know how many this was. It's more than 25, maybe 30. So uh, I'll read some more next time with commentary. Uh, it's actually kind of difficult to read these without commentary, but uh, I alternate with and without commentary. Hopefully these are useful. Uh, feel free to use comment, leave some comments. Uh, there is a link to the comment period in the uh, description of this video. Uh, we'll be back to chat with uh, or to read some comments on the other comment period, which is happening concurrently for the redefinition of a firearm as well. Um, thanks for watching.